Hi, this is Jeff Heaton. All right, we're going to talk today about what type of GPU you should be using for deep learning. We're going to talk about this really from several aspects, both from the cloud and also if you're going to use a GPU on a local machine, be it mobile or be it a desktop system that you've built. So this presentation that I'm giving you on YouTube, I'm at the GTC conference virtually on my, on my sofa with my dog, but such as 2020. And I've gone to a number of sessions. I've been meaning on thinking of doing something related to what type of GPU to use. And a few of the conferences that I've seen got me thinking about this. So one in particular, and I definitely want to call out, and I'll put a link to his Medium article here, but is uh, Sheshank Prasanna, if I'm saying his name correctly. He gave a very good presentation on which AWS GPU you should use. Now this is related to what I'm talking about, and I'll cover some of the same information that, that he talked about as well and also Lenovo's presentation on things that they're doing with NVIDIA gave me a couple, of, a couple of ideas for this as well. So I'll put all my sources in the description to this YouTube video. Now, first of all, this is very timely, time-sensitive information. If you're watching this video a year or two later, things have probably changed greatly. This is October 2020, and essentially, NVIDIA has just released the 30 series, so that has a lot to do with things. The Ampere architecture has also just been repla re released, replacing some of the, the, the previous architectures that came before it. So we'll, we'll look at these things. We'll look at really just how I choose a GPU based on some other information, too, that I'm including here. First question would be just maker. There's NVIDIA, there's AMD, there's Intel. If you care about deep learning and AI use of this, this is an easy one. NVIDIA is really the only game in town here. I know some of you will probably disagree with me on that, but the reason I choose NVIDIA is just because that's what's represented in the cloud. And I want what I'm going to use in the cloud to be the same as my computer here. Also, I'm not considering gaming. I'm not a gamer. If you're looking for a recommendation on a GPU for gaming, plenty of YouTubers on that. Jay's Two Cents is one of my favorites. Linux Tech Tips, there's a ton of, a ton of those guys. So this is just on deep learning, just on NVIDIA. And the first thing you'll want to look at is, and the dog is now bored uh, with the presentation, so this is, this is good. So the first thing that we'll look at is the GeForce series, because if you're going to build your own computer or buy something that's a hybrid gaming machine learning computer, this is probably what you'll have. Like I've mentioned, I have the Titan, which is pretty much part of the GeForce series, although it's, it's very much like a GeForce, but it's got a lot of RAM for deep learning. Let's look at the current lineup of GeForce cards. We have the 30 series, which right now is the, the, top, of, the top of the line. There's the 30 series, 20, and and earlier. The Titan is similar to the 20 series. So the Ampere line, the 3090 is the top of the line. This is, this sells for $1,500. They do, and the other issue you'll run into too, these are all out of stock right now. If you're watching this later than October 2020, hopefully these are available. So you have here, the various levels of this. There's the 3090, the 3080, and then also the 3070 at various price points. The prices have really dropped on these. The top of the line, the 3090 and 3080, from everything I've read, are superior to the Titan RTX, and the Titan RTX was 2,500. So this is a, this is a great time to be shopping for these. Now, if we compare, 
Okay, here is the page that I was looking for. This gives a good comparison of the 3090, 80, and 70. Another thing to be thinking about as well is multiple GPU. Multiple GPU back in the days, more on the gaming side, was a way typically that you would buy a medium level graphics card and then add another one later on if you had more money and you wanted to, to buy more advanced systems. That's not really an option here. The only one of these that supports multiple cards in the GeForce line is the 3090 currently and the Titan RTX, the, the, the previous generation. The 80 and 70 do not. So you really don't have an option here to buy a, a cheaper graphics card and then add a second one later to really boost your capabilities. The 3090 is really going to be the premier one for deep learning. And what I'm often looking at here for deep learning is even more than the number of CUDA cores is the memory. Is this memory 24, you can see at the 3090's level, that's, I mean, that's a, that's a deep learning card. The quadros go even higher than this. I've seen 48 on some of those. The GeForce, the 10 and the 8, you can do some things on these, but you're going to have to make some compromises most likely on batch sizes or total number of weights or the complexities of the neural networks. The CUDA cores are great. That more has to do though with how fast it's going to process. Now memory too becomes important when you're dealing with multiple GPUs. So if you buy two 3090s or two of any of the quadros or any of those, what exactly does that mean? If you have two of these 3090s, do you, do you now have 48 gigabytes of RAM? Well, you do, sort of. It depends on how you're architecting things. A lot of the neural network setups, especially if you're, uh, if you're using some of the more advanced TensorFlow and PyTorch parallelization capabilities that we'll talk about in a moment, often they're doing parallel data. So they're just loading the same data into multiple GPUs and using them on your mini batches and other, other techniques to let you get greater training performance, not really to load a more complicated neural network. Now you can certainly do that. If you have two of these in here, if you're willing to get in there and architect it correctly, you can have the first layers of your neural networks on the first GPU, other layers on another, and if you can line that up correctly, oh my gosh, you can get really good performance and very, very big neural networks, but you have to really architect it to the actual type of neural network that you're doing. If you want to just throw cores at it, like if you're using SageMaker on AWS and you can just enter 2000 cores and, and run it at it, you will be using parallel data and just you'll need a lot of memory per GPU. It's not like they're working together. They're, they're working parallel in a, in a somewhat embarrassingly parallel fashion. Now, if you're doing 10 gig or 8 gig, really though, any three of these is going to be, is going to be great to get you started. And good grief, 5,000, almost 6,000 CUDA cores on the entry level one here is, is amazing. And around $500 plus or minus any of these would be, would be great to, to get you started. Now I do this for a living. I, I make my living this way. I would probably get this one. I don't know that it adds, that the 3090 adds enough above the, the, the Titan that I'm presently using that I would necessarily go out and buy one right now. Well, I can't go out and buy one right now. You can't, you can't find them. But that's something I'll definitely explore as the year progresses and if I decide that I need the additional performance. So that's the GeForce line. And these are all the 30s. So those first two, those first two numbers that really tells you the, the current level of, of technology generation. As this video ages, perhaps there'll be a 40 series out at some point. But this is, this is brand new as of October 2020. 
Now let's look at the Quadro. So Quadro, there's a new one coming out. It's an A6000, Ampere 6000. That will be the new top of the line with the newest technology. That's not even available yet, but it's coming. If we scroll down to get to, there's really two divisions here. There's the Quadro and the desktop workstations. If you're interested in the latest on Quadro there and, and you're watching some of the videos from GTC, if you have access to those, Lenovo did a very good overview of their new ThinkStation, which leverages a lot of this technology. Quadro and laptops, I am using a Quadro 5, RTX 5000 in the laptop that I'm presenting this from, which is a ThinkPad P53. Now let's look at Quadro on workstations first. The new A6000 and then the, the line that's been here for a bit, a bit longer. All these are RTX, the RTX 8000, 6000, and 5000. Now I did put these all together on this image. That shows you kind of them all side by side. So you can see the amount of memory and cores and other things here. So this A6000, that is going to have 48 gigabytes of RAM. I mean, that's, that, is, that is a lot. Whereas you can see some of the other lines, like the 6000 has the 24 gigabytes of RAM. 5000 has 16. And then 48 on this 8000. So the 8000 of current technology is really the, the, the flagship. This is the 48. If you, you can get two of these in a single computer, Lenovo makes some of those. I'm sure others do as well. And that would move you out to 96. Although if you're doing parallel memory, then you're gonna have the same thing loaded on each of these. But if you did truly architect that neural network correctly, you could have a very large, very large system. The 5000 is what I have on the the laptop. Now it's a mobile 5000, but the specs come in the same in terms of raw performance. And if you're interested in seeing the Quadro RTX 5000 with a Lenovo ThinkPad P53, I have one of those on loan from Lenovo. I'm actually using it right now. And that is... I'll have, a, I'll have a number of videos showing what that RTX 5000 is really capable of in this machine. So then looking back at the workstations or the laptops, here they show you the two that are available, the 5000 and the 4000, and they show that basically the desktop and mobile, it's really pretty similar. The desktop here for the 5000 is a little bit faster, but not not by a tremendous amount. If you're looking to buy a workstation class machine for machine learning, you will probably be getting a Quadro in there. They're, they're more expensive, but they have the memory and the processing power to really tackle those heavy duty machine learning. Okay, so in NVIDIA, you have the GeForce and the Quadro. We've looked at both of those. Now, in the work, in the server room, it is the NVIDIA Tesla. Now, Tesla is kind of the older name for this. It's going more towards Ampere. According to Wikipedia, NVIDIA retired the Tesla brand in May 2020, reportedly because of potential confusion with brand of cars. Very fast cars, very fast GPUs. I don't know, I, I, I would have thought the same name would be good. But this shows you, sort of Tesla was the first generation name and then they came out with Fermi, Kepler, Maxwell, Pascal, Volta, and Turing. They sort of kept Tesla as the name for the enterprise class card. Usually you don't buy a Tesla or an Ampere and put that directly into a desktop computer. The server class GPUs and also if you look at like Xenon versus 
the i9s and i7s that you would have on a desktop machine in the enterprise, in the server room, the data centers, you want the heat to be less on these machines because they're so, so dense, but more cores. So that's really how these, how these fit together. Where you'll most likely see the, the high-end, the server room machines, or at least where I deal with the most, is on the cloud. This page on AWS gives a pretty good overview of the, the family types. If you're dealing with AWS, which is what I work with primarily, you'll have the P3 instances, I'm sorry, the P family and the G family. I deal mainly with the P family. The P is more meant for machine learning training and the G family is more for graphics and for inference of your models once you've got them trained. If you're deploying a model and you're going to be inferring from it, you probably want to look at like a G4 or something like that. I use the P3 instances and then inside of there, there's a variety of them that you can choose from depending on how many GPUs you want to have on a single host. And deciding how many GPUs on the single host, that gets into the same issues that I talked about before with multiple GPU cards and are you parallelizing the memory? Are you trying to build a structure where you've got different GPUs handling different parts of that particular neural network? The Tesla V100 is the, was the top of the line. And now they've got the A100, which is based on the Ampere. That has not been fully adopted into AWS. Google GCP does currently have those. I have not worked with the A100s a lot. But in choosing a GPU, if you're putting it on your computer or if you're buying a laptop that has one of them, you need to pick the most general purpose one that is going to fit you the most. So I would, I would be going for one of those Quadros with, if it's a laptop, one of those Quadro 5000. If it's desktop, if I'm building it myself, probably a 3090. If I am buying it from somebody, probably a Quadro 8000, although those, those are not cheap. They're around five $5,000, I believe, at today's prices. I always hate quite quoting prices because they change over time in a video and they're region specific in US dollars is what I generally quote them in. But when you're dealing on the cloud, you can, they're like golf clubs. You don't have to pick the GPU that is the best general purpose for what you're going to be doing on this machine. You can pick and choose and change them to whatever job you're working on. So that Medium article that I linked to, especially if you're dealing with AWS, is a very, it's in the description, it's a very good overview of choosing AWS P and G instances to suit whatever you're currently working with. All right, thank you for watching this video. And if you're interested in GPUs, deep learning, all these kind of things, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'll be having some other videos as I make further use of this P53 that, that I have on loan to see, see what we can do with it. Thank you for watching.